Okay, today we are working on a 08 Tahoe with a cranky ignition switch. There we go. I gotta wiggle it to get it going. The displays have gone out. Turn this radio down. The displays have gone out and uh, we're gonna get him fixed up. It's a very common thing for the 07 to 13. 1500 series trucks for Chevrolet. We're going to remove this air conditioner duct right here, the, the shroud in the front, this and this piece here. We're going to pry up this section here as well as about halfway down this so we can get to two screws that are under each of these. Underneath here there is a screw right there and a screw right there those are going to have to be removed uh, then we'll remove this inner inner bezel here and then we'll be able to get to the screws that hold the instrument cluster Hopefully guys be able to see that from that angle. Is that just our chrome cracking device? So we don't need to push it. Let's let it be clear. I want to be able to see it. So there are four little clips that have to be pried away from the air conditioner duct. And they are very stubborn. And right here, there's a Phillips head screw. Right here is a Phillips head screw. And uh, we're going to get those out as well as the two up under the bezel. So, you can't be around the tree there. It's also common that these things are so brittle. It's common for those points where those screws go in for them to break off. And I can hear that this one already did. So you may not get those two top screws back in. Which this thing's normally in so good, you don't need them anyway. Okay. It's so just with a little work, you can pull that piece out. Now we want to get this piece off. Which is in there with just some clips get your fingers underneath the back side of it and pull straight back it doesn't feel the best like you're gonna break something but it does come out get the gear shift selector out of the way As you can see, those are in there with those copper clips. They are rather rough to get out. Now you got four seven millimeter screws holding the cluster in. Help 
helps if you've got that magnetic bit. I got a little flex shaft on here. That helps out a lot. There you go. The cluster is removed. Don't forget to put your car back in park. You don't want to be chasing that sucker down the road. And that's it. You're out. Everything else in there, conditioning inside. All right, now we're going to do the tear down on the cluster. Occasionally there's some screws in the back of these. This one does not have them. So you've got your standard little clips that hold the back side on. This particular cluster comes all the way down to the board to do the repair, so we're going to have to take the back and the, and the front and the back off. Set your back side away. Front side, it's got little clips that hang up, hang up. Keep your cluster, your lens cluster on there. You just push down on them and then out from the back side. Down and out, and down and out, and then off comes your lens. Now we're down to this. This is where your needles have to come off. Now I know where the needles are set. Unfortunately, there's some little markers on the side here that tell you, tell you where your needles are set. The way you remove the needles, you'll notice that just moving them around, they have stops. If you twist the needle further past the stop and pull up, the needle will come off. Now we're down to the uh, circuit board, which is where we want to be. Rest is on the other bench. Stand by. Okay, now that we're on the other bench over here, the problem with this cluster is always this MOSFET right here. It tends to burn up after it starts to release from the board. This one fortunately has not burned up, so Looks like it's just in the process of releasing and we've caught it early. Some of these boards are horrible about burning a hole right through the board itself. I'm gonna see if I can find one of them over here that uh, has done just that. Okay, here's a pretty good example. This is what happens when you wait too long. That right there has burned through all kinds of traces. The electrical connections that we'd need to make with that now are, are very difficult. So, this board pretty much trash. So if your odometers, your odometer or your prindle go out, you want to get this one fixed as soon as possible because the longer you wait, the more heat occurs in that component and the more damage is done. Okay, move back to the other bench so that we can show you a little something here. These things right here, if you press on them, you can make them come back on. Just a little further indication that that's where your problem is. Let's get her fixed. Try to get you a position where you can see this. We 
probably best if you go full screen here. A um, little flux goes a long ways with these. They don't typically be too much trouble, but flux helps with everything. Everything that has to do with solder. Get you some solder. Iron's hot. I like to come at these from the other angle actually, but for video's sake, we'll do it this way. I'll just make sure that leg, each leg, has got a good solder connection to the board underneath. And solder this back side as well. And it's just your ground. And you should be done with your repair other than the cleaning up the flux. We do have more of these when they uh, burn themselves up. do burn themselves up. This one was nice and fresh in its failure. So we didn't have to uh, replace it. Find that part on Mauser. Or uh, DigiKey. important to get your flux cleaned off of there because it will kind of eat up some traces itself so get that stuff off of there it's done its job that's it that's the repair on this one show you the uh, process of putting it back together here uh, lay the board and it's back put uh, back plate pop the front plate on uh, try to get any of the little fingerprints or any grease I got on here off your needles go back on We are pointing at this bottom part of that little marker, which is exactly where they were. So what you do is when you put these needles on, it's going to have a plate you feel the stop. Well, as you rotate around to that mark, you'll feel the stop. And that's where you want to set it. Hard to describe this, but you will feel what you're doing. So, if I start the needle over here, then I'll feel the stop over here. As I rotate around to the mark, now the stop is over here. And that's that. back all just kind of snaps together throw a little cleaner at it it's just window cleaner and power it up gauges bounce like they're supposed to and the displays come up check your trip odometer it's all working everything's good ready to go back in the vehicle 
this plug comes off the back like this. It comes out like this in the car as well. So there's a little catch right there. Push down, wiggle it out. All right, so one thing worth mentioning, repairing your cluster versus replacing your cluster. Repairing your cluster keeps all the vehicle information intact. That way your mileage stays correct. And on some Fords and some other cars, it has security information in the, uh, in the cluster itself, which allows your car to crank versus not. It's always a good thing. So if you put a new cluster in, what you'll need to do is program that cluster for your vehicle. And that can be more expensive than the cluster itself if you're putting a used cluster in. Uh, putting this thing back in is just the reverse of taking it out. Put the screws back to where they came out of. The seven millimeters go here, each corner of the cluster. Don't over torque them if you've got the big DeWalt drill. You're gonna wind up cracking things. I've got this one with a pretty low torque setting so that it's not gonna over torque these screws. Uh, next piece to go on is this one. Oh, no, it's not. I lied to you. It's this one. This goes around the uh, little trim rings that go around the each of the gauges they fit into their little slots once you feel they're in the slots you just push and then it goes now you can put this one on. uh, like I told you these things get brittle this one has gotten terminally brittle and those top screws have the receptacle for those screws has gone away so it will not be receiving those two screws now that we got this in let's turn that beeper off I had to be driving y'all crazy it was driving me crazy all right so two screws in the solder This one here, and this one behind the middle AC vents here. And it's just a matter of fishing your AC ducts back into their spots, which can be tricky sometimes. It's difficult sometimes to get them to line up. Sometimes I have to go ahead and take that whole panel out to get it to line back up. Especially when I've taken half of that loose like I did. So we're just going to go ahead and pop that whole panel out so we can line it up properly. So they can be a bear. Actually, I could get it lined up right there. There we go. one over here and this job is done when I was telling you about how brittle those dashes are you can see this was already like this when it came in but uh, oh there's a huge crack right there these things will crack all the way out all the way out. I've seen these things to where they're just destroyed. You can see the dash is not in the greatest shape. However, we didn't do any of that, so we're in good shape here. Normal wear and tear on a 07 Tahoe at this point. So she's ready to go. 
find the key. There it is. Oh, it's going to do that again too. But there you go. All operational. So that's the biggest repair that we, uh, the, the most common repair we see on the 07 to 13 GM truck chassis. Uh, that's your basic cluster. It's in most of just about all of the GM truck series from 7 to 13 except for the Escalades and some fancier stuff. So um, that's typically what goes wrong. Uh, there are some other things that go wrong with it. Processor will completely become corrupt and uh, we've seen holes burn right through the processor. It's not a repair for that currently because we don't know what processor they're using. As soon as we know what processor they're using, we might be able to fix them. Anyway, uh, like, subscribe, share, hit the notification bell if you want to see the new videos as they come up. And um, thanks for watching. Hope we all get smarter with this stuff together. Thanks.